College professors of Reddit, what is the dumbest thing a student has said or done? When we have you turn papers into an online anti-cheating software, don't buy the paper from a previous student on those note sharing sites, I promise you it's in the database. One of those sites claimed my paper had too many similarities to three other papers and the professor got insanely confused. It was a group project where everyone wrote the introduction, methods, materials, and data sections together and then we wrote our own discussion and results. It took her a disturbingly long time to figure out why the whole class was cheating in groups of four. Tay here. My favorite was a student who came up to the professor after class and asked if he could take the quiz a day late because it was on arm day and his arms would be too tired to write. Not me, but my aunt has taught college and high school level history courses. She once assigned a paper on something to do with the role of rhetoric in the Roman Empire. I don't remember the exact wording of her assignment, but it was something to this effect. A student, completely and entirely missing the point of the assignment, and possibly of the English language in general, spun an elaborate paper of the fictional life and military and political career of a Roman soldier, named Rhetoric. My aunt still has the paper somewhere. It's a hoot. The world needs to read that paper. Find it at all costs. Tay for a glass blowing class my university has. So my school is very STEM focused. Like 70% engineering majors. So there isn't a lot of artistic talent among us but some people are really bad. So I had one guy who was struggling and no matter what I did he just wasn't getting it. His pieces were generally very small, sloppy, asymmetrical, etc. So for his final he hands in this beautiful vase. Cool colors, symmetric, nice size and weight. Well the professor was looking it over and giving her compliments except one problem. She had made it a few days before and it went missing from the shelf where we put pieces while we wait for people to pick them up. So the guy tries to turn in a piece made by the actual professor. I overheard two students have the following conversation. Student 1. Isn't it awesome we get to live right by the ocean. Student 2. That's not an ocean. 1. But it has a beach. If it's not the ocean, what is it? 2. I don't know. I work in Chicago. I went to a college that is on Lake Ontario, which is the lake that is in between New York and Canada. I've heard a few different students seriously refer to it as the Atlantic Ocean and wondering why it wasn't as salty that far inland. <laughs> College course. Students are asked to estimate the date in which Attila took over Europe it wasn't a history class. The goal was showing that people's estimates are influenced by those other people around them. Except that the first girl said 6000. When the professor said 6000 6000 what she replied AD. She's not wrong yet. We were having a lecture for a course about cultural awareness. The lecturer asks any questions. One guy raises his hand and asks is the Murray River brown because aborigines bathe in it. If mean. If you wanted to play it straight. You could argue that a high traffic river would be naturally cloudier than one that experienced fewer usage. Not me but a colleague. Two students came to see him during office HRS with a complaint. Your exams discriminate against students who can't think. He swears that's a direct quote. I think they must have meant to say something like, can't think under pressure, but that's not how it came out. Out of morbid curiosity he asked them what their major was. Answer, we're both pre-med, yeah, you might wanna rethink that plan, kids. I was in an American foreign policy class, and on the first day of class the professor asks, what is the capital of Canada? After a couple of incorrect guesses at Toronto and Montreal, one girl blurts out Albuquerque. The professor looks at her and says Albuquerque, as in Albuquerque, New Mexico. He got a good kick out of it, and on every test the rest of the semester, there was a multiple choice question asking for the capital of Canada, with Albuquerque as one of the choices. The similar thing happened to me, in a presentation in my Japanese class. I read a hiragana character wrong and accidentally said I was a noodle. The prof called me noodle for the rest of the semester. 20 years have gone by and the only thing I remember how to say in Japanese is I am a noodle. Word for word freaking copying of an assignment. Even down to the other guy's student number. Spelling mistakes. And format. Not a professor, but a graduate here. 
We gave an exam question where the students had to explain the difference between wild boars and domesticated pigs and how those traits reflect current theories of domestication. More than one student referred to the boar's tusks as horns, but one particular student wrote the whole answer about how pigs lost their antlers due to domestication. Pig antlers. As a note, I double checked and he was a native English speaker too, so this was not an issue of translation. Oh dear. I was a TA in a college psychology class and one of the papers asked how would you explain emotions to an alien from another planet who didn't have any some kid's answer was how he'd explain emotions to a Chinese person. I was at a final, one time, and the professor was counting the students. He then said I printed off exactly enough tests, but there appears to be one more student than test. So, if you're here, and have never seen my face, please leave. Someone got up and left. We are all very confused what that dude was thinking. This was an 8am chemistry final on a Saturday. Not so much stupid as much as it was goddamned hilarious. My wife and I, both professors, were crossing the quad after a meeting. A very frantic girl runs across campus, yelling into the phone, just delete the really naked ones. It's my go to ridiculous student story and I never even knew her name. As opposed to slightly naked. Here's a story from one of my husband's colleagues, after an exam, a student told the professor, I didn't know the answers to the essay questions, so I made up my own essay questions and answered them the professor replied, that's the stupidest thing I ever heard, and when I go to lunch, I'm going to tell all my friends. Copy pasted the first sentence from Wikipedia, as his full essay, in one of my English classes. We had to write a paper about an event that occurred on our birthday or a biography on someone that shares our birthday. One kid copied the entire Wikipedia page on his topic, pictures, titles, the sidebar with the different languages, and the references. Didn't even edit it before he turned it in. I was a college lab TA for many years and we used to actually keep a running log of all the stupid stuff students would do. My favorite to this day, student, T, A. My thermometer isn't working can you please take a look, me, walk over and look at the setup, try not to burst out laughing, that's a pipette, student, not a thermometer, he literally forgot what a thermometer looks like. We were doing color illumination and a student called me over to see if she was looking at the right thing in the microscope, 1, she didn't have a slide on the stage to focus on, 2, she didn't have the light source turned on, 3, she didn't have the microscope plugged in yet. I had a student come to office hours to contest his exam grade, specifically the short essays. Him, I just don't think it's fair I lost points here, I'm being punished for not knowing the right answer. Me, that's the point of an exam. In the first semester I ever taught freshman composition, I had a student who came to my office hours drunk. Submitted a formal essay with a cover page that had his name and the course information written on it and different magic markers, and submitted another formal essay printed on 5 pages of fanfold. Tractor feed printer paper with the tractor guide still attached, the pages not separated from each other, and with a staple in the upper left corner. Think about that for a moment. You can guess his grade. I was a graduate TA for an architectural history class last semester, and this one lovely student who got a 2 stroke 100 on his final exam, yes you read that correctly, informed me or the professor rather that this class was way too freaking hard, and you expect way too freaking much of us. I obviously failed this class so frick you and see you next semester. This was his written answer to the last essay question in a class that he is required to take as an architecture major with the only professor that teaches it. I'm just a TA, but a surprising amount of students in labs like to turn in lab reports that their friends who already took the lab wrote in a previous semester, and I mean they receive the lab report from their friend and then turn it in without even changing the name or date at the top of the paper, it happens every semester without fail. I had a TA once read a student's lab report out loud because the student had literally typed random words in it assuming no one would read it to grade. Biology professor here. I had a student give a presentation on genetics, only, it wasn't so much genetics, but a compilation of neo-Nazi websites saying that Hitler was right for purifying the gene pool. Had to shut that crap down real quick. 
not a professor, but this was when I was in grad school. Grad school. Student in back of class. Can you get antisocial personality disorder from a sneeze? Teacher. What? Student. My friend is really mean sometimes and acts like. Lists off random symptoms of antisocial. Which we'd been discussing that day. And he sneezed on me. I mean. Do I go to the doctor and get a shot? Crickets. How did this girl get into grad school? No. Sweetie. Number. You cannot get a non-communicable mental health disorder from a goddamn sneeze. I'm a paramedic. I have had more than one patient who thought their diabetes was a sexually transmitted disease. I teach English at a private Christian college. While discussing The Weight of Glory by C.S. Lewis, we broach the topic of Abraham's bosom as shown in the story of the rich man and Lazarus. I say to the class, being mature, what is a bosom? Dead silence. From the back of the classroom, I hear a voice, a but. Now, I try not to mock my students for any reason, but I couldn't help but laugh. After I collect myself, I say, no, it's not a but. After Lazarus died, he did not go to Abraham's butt. After class, he told me that the passage in question made a lot more sense to him now. I had to explain to some people for a group project what the word bosom meant. I said chestalaria but they heard me say chestalaria, like a disease. I teach voice lessons. One of the course requirements is to attend concerts. We all have various ways that we audit actual attendance. In my first year, I made them write concert reports, as well as bring me a program or ticket or some such. One student, who was always a little scattered, turned in a concert paper for a concert called the annual Chancellor's Concert. As I read his paper, it quickly became apparent that he had not attended the concert, but rather had looked up the concert program online and attempted to write something relevant. This was apparent because the program he was writing about had occurred some 5 years earlier, and not on the concert that he was claiming to have attended. Apparently the implications of the word annual was lost on him. Oh, let me count the ways. I had a student miss his midterm exam because, and I quote I got fired from my band and I was too bummed out to come to school. I had another adult student, 35, who pitched a fit during a meeting of students and teachers to figure out times for private lessons because he claimed we were disorganized. I got him calmed down enough to resume the scheduling, and then he went off again, ending with if this had been the marines someone would have been shot by now. Then there was the student who thought he was too cool for school and used to wear mirrored sunglasses all the time, as in in class, etc. One Monday he didn't show up to class, and it turned out that over the weekend he'd been at a party where there was alcohol and it got raided by the cops. Since he was underage he tried to run for it, but since he was wearing his shades and it was at night he ran face first into a fence instead. Some kid gave a speech on why weed should be legalized and only used quotes from Snoop Dogg. I'm not a professor, but one of my professors told us this funny story. He was teaching one of the basic level literature classes, a class that only exists for students to fulfill the core curriculum requirements. So of course, the class is full of students who don't care about interpreting literature. There was a group of students in the back, all friends, all frat bro types, business majors. After the final exam, one of those guys emailed the professor and said, why did I get a D on the final? I copied off my friend next to me and you gave him a C. That's bull crap. My professor was shocked, because our school has a no tolerance rule. Anyone found guilty of plagiarism gets expelled. He decided to ignore the email because he was so indifferent to that student. Whoa. That's an impressive act of kindness and a completely blown opportunity to screw with a student. Obligatory not a professor goes here. Okay, anyway, I was actually pretty solid bros with one of the professors in my major, a guy who had been teaching at the college for nearly 40 years. He was an oddball who everyone thought wasn't the sharpest bulb in the sky, and he'd tell me stories about dumb kids who tried to pull a fast one on him. The best one actually came with evidence, a note on yellowed paper he'd kept from 1985. It was a piece torn off from something like a white paper bag with ballpoint writing, and all it said was, Hello, Doctor, Morningstar, I am the doctor of Chris, last name redacted, he will not be in class today because he had a headache. I have prescribed him a medicinal herb and have told him to listen to music. 
he will be doing that instead. Signed, Dr. Angry Squiggle. He said it was the dumbest thing anyone had ever done, because the handwriting was easily recognized as the students. He did let this kid off the hook, though, because he'd been through the 60s so, you know, whatever. We almost framed that for his retirement, though. Wasn't the sharpest bulb in the sky? Well, that's a new one. Not a professor, but was in the class. Okay, the course I was taking was intro to human evolution. Covered the science of evolution, the history of discoveries of our relatives in the homo genus, the chain of evolution that with the end result of, and how scientists classify animals, etc etc. It was a fun class. Anyway, the class was your standard once a week lecture with a once a week lab section with a T. It also had an online component through one of those courseware software packages that we'd use to turn in stuff online and take quizzes and see the syllabus. There was also a chat room on the courses page. That's important. One week, the professor was out of town for a speaking engagement so she arranged to have us watch a video in lecture, to write a pricey about it, sort of a short summary relating the contents of the video to the section of the course we were in, and turn it in, easy, well, someone found a copy of the movie on YouTube or something, watched it, wrote his pricey ahead of time so he wouldn't have to go to class. He sent his pricey to his friend who then posted a link to it and to the video on the courseware chatroom. In a class of about 200 students, 180 or so didn't show up for the day of the video. I was not one of them. They had all watched the YouTube video and or used the guy's pricey to write their own and turned it in. Some people just straight copied the guy's pricey and modified some words. According to my tay, a couple of people didn't even go that far and just slapped their name on the top. The best part about the whole thing, not only was this this was all arranged and talked about on the chatroom on the courseware website that the professor and the TAs regularly read and participated in, to answer questions and whatnot. The YouTube video that this all started with, was the wrong movie. It had a similar title, but it was part of a series and they had all watched and written about or copied words written about the wrong movie. So those of us who did the assignment properly got automatic as and extra credit. People who watched the YouTube video and wrote their own thing got D's. People who copied the original pricey failed the assignment and were referred to the Dean of Students for academic dishonesty. Now, I lied. This is the best part. A month and a half later, the professor had scheduled the same thing. Movie in class. Pricey. About 5 people in the course did the same freaking thing and, again, coordinated it in the classroom chat. They found the wrong video. Copied another person's work. They were expelled. Creative writing. Day 1. Professor. I want everyone to say your name, major, and favorite author. This is the only time I will tell you to lie in class. If you don't have a favorite author, make one up. Student. I'm so and so. I'm an education major. I don't have a favorite author, because I don't like to read. There were actually two students with that exact same answer. Same major too. I worked as an English tay for adult high school classes at a community college. I was asked did the goths who sacked Rome wear black and how did Shakespeare write Julius Caesar if Caesar died before Shakespeare was born? The most concerning, however, was the responses to an open book test. Q. Name three elements. A. Fire. Water. And air. I was told that writing Mathurfrika, this isn't Pokemon on the test would be frowned upon by administration. Earth. Hut, Captain Planet. Math class for non-science majors. There were a total of 25 students in the class. I was planning on cheating on all of your tests and quizzes, but now I'm pretty sure you would catch me. I'm not a professor, but as a university student I showed up for an English class a bit early where one of the students was having an impromptu meeting with the prof about the required reading for the course. This was still early in the course. I'll never forget her holding the syllabus up to the professor and saying, but do we actually have to read these books? The professor just said, that's supposed to be the fun part, which was a pretty diplomatic response. I would have been a bit more incredulous. I don't know what she was expecting in a university English class. You have been visited by the Pope Doggo. Comment 4 times and he will bless you with lots of good luck. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.